By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my pink sylvan deck and it's called that way because I'm splashing green so it's white, red and a little bit of sylvan libraries in there. And I'm playing against a mono red deck, actually a mono red brown deck, I guess I should say, so red brown, it's I believe an ATOG deck. And as you can see I've started there with a the savannah lines and my opponent is playing a lightning bolt so that gets rid of that savannah and I'm playing a Mishra's factory. My opponent's playing second mountain here. And let's see what's going to happen. He's playing a Mana Vault. It's a little bit hard to see from time to time. But I hope you still recognize the card. So the Mana Vault is there. Doesn't have a follow-up. I'm playing another Mistress Factory. And this is always kind of difficult. Because if I decide to attack the chances um, that he's going to play a Bolt over my Mistress Factory are pretty high. So I'm not doing that actually. I'm playing another Savannah Lines passing turn. End of turn he's playing another Lightning Bolt. So those are two Savannah Lines in the bin there. And let's see what my opponent can do with all the mana. He's playing a second Mana Vault. Means he still has two floating. Tapping a red one and there's the Atok. So the one two creature from the Antiquities is quite famous. Um, you can sacrifice an artifact and it gets plus two plus two until end of turn. And I guess I just need to get rid of this Atok as soon as possible. And at NoobCon of this year, there was actually an ATOC deck reaching the finals and almost won the uh, the old school World Cup, uh, Swedish World Cup. So that kind of shows how powerful um, the ATOC deck can be. And what we see here is I'm playing his Sword Supplies here over the ATOC, understandably. And as a result, my opponent is second the Mana Vault to gain some extra life and not lose a life. Um, from the Mana Vault, of course, because if it's tapped during your upkeep, it deals one damage to you unless you untap it for four. Playing a Black Vice here, it's, it's not the best card against my deck because I'm playing with a lot of cheap spells, so it's pretty easy for me to empty my hand. And I'm playing here a Mox Pearl. Tapping four, so that's probably a Suchi, and it's one of the changes that I actually made in my deck is I added a... Um, a sushi so I had a four drop because I really needed one I noticed that while I was playing against other decks so he's taking a damage now from the vault playing a shatter over the sushi so sushi has gone and there's the mox ruby and oh I'm tapping oh okay interesting so now I am attacking with both Mishra's factories because my opponent is tapped out so I can hit him for four so I believe he's now on 16 and I've also played that White Knight, so there's a lot of pressure here on the board. And this this looks really difficult for my uh, opponent here. And it looks like he's passing turn here, not doing anything. So that's great for me because I've got like a huge offense here. So I can, I can hit him for six now. The question is, am I going to do it? Because he's untapped, so he can he can bolt, but I have enough mana, so I don't really mind. Worst case scenario, he plays a bolt over one of the factories, um, and I don't really mind. And that's exactly what happens, well, although he's playing it over the White Knight. So, okay, what he's doing, he's actually saying pre-combat, he's saying I'm tapping one of your um, factories, and that means I'm using the other factory to pump. So when he says I'm going to... Upon animation, I'm going to tap one of your factories. In response, we're going to pump my other factory 3-3. Three, three, and then he actually bolts uh, his, his uh, white knight, the white knight, so not the assembly works. So he gets three damage. And he plays a um, wheel of fortune here. I kind of feel he has to. He has no choice. But this is not too bad for me. My hand was as good as empty. And you can see I also had a wheel in my hand. Didn't want to play it out. This is a nice play, though, because he's playing a second vice. And I got a fresh... Uh, fresh hand so that means I get six damage and you see it there I'm going to 14 so I mean that's nice it's six damage but I have a handful um, he's on 12 it's still a lot of life but my deck is creature heavy um, there are also lightning bolts in there and it can go really really fast um, and there I'm stripping his Mishra's factory Remember, he's all tapped out, so I've, I've got four damage on the board already, and the question is, do I need the mana, or can I just hit him for four? And it looks like I'm using the mana there for the Mishra. I'm playing a Suchi. And 
I'm actually using the other mana as well to play a white knight there, making some changes there with the way I tap things because you don't want to end up with a colorless mana. You'd rather have a white mana for swords or in this case a mox ruby for a red mana swords. Um, even if you have nothing in hand, you kind of want to show your opponent, you know, I can still play a lightning bolt, maybe I have one. I can still play a swords, maybe I have one. So you want to put that uh, threat open. So actually, looking back at how I've played this one, I think uh, it would have been better if I would have kept a plateau open. Because then there are even more question marks for your opponent to, to deal with. And this is interesting, he's playing a Yoshian Soldier. It's a pretty cool card, doesn't see a lot of play. It's a 1-4 creature for 3 mana and you do not have to tap it. So it is what they call modern magic vigilance. Um, I always thought it's pretty cool, but for some reason it's one of those cards you have in your hand and while brewing a deck and eventually you don't, you don't, uh, it doesn't make the cut, you know, you don't choose to go for it. And here I'm attacking again. My opponent in response is tapping my Suchi here. And I'm attacking with two factories and with the White Knight. My other factory still has summoning sickness. And remember, I can pump that factory uh, up to 3-3. Three, three. So I'm choosing to pump the factory that's not being blocked by the Ocean Soldier. That means he's getting um, five damage in total. So despite the fact that he can uh, tap the Suchi, uh, he's still getting all that damage, and I kind of feel that he needs Stone Rains. I, I believe he actually plays four Stone Rains. I haven't seen a single copy. And there's a Soul Ring. At least he's playing another Assembly Worker, so another Mishra's Factory, so that is some blockers on the board here. And in this game, you can see how important the Mishra's Factories can be when you can play pretty aggressively with them. I've done a lot of damage. And remember at the start of the game when I decided not to use my Mishra's Factory um, because I needed the mana. But now in late game I have enough mana and I'm just going going full force. And he's tapping my Suchi again so I've animated all my Mishra's Factory so I'm attacking now with a huge army. And of course Taz can have a good block here but actually he's only on five lives so that means he has to block, he has no choice. And remember that one Factory has Summoning Sickness so he cannot pump it up. Um, Two, three, three, and I believe that's what we're discussing now. Yeah, so that one he just played. So the other one he can pump up for three, three, meaning he can win uh, the block here. So it's a good block for him. So one of my factory dies. Oh, he's actually blocking my knight. Um, but there is a lightning bolt. So that means end of the game because I can deal two damage with one of the blockers. So he's going down to three and there is a lightning bolt. So that's a win for me here. Uh, let's quickly go on to game number two and um, see what's gonna happen there. Game number two and I'm leading here. So that means I'm on the draw and my opponent is on the play. And I only saw one ATOG there. So I'm sure there are four in there. And he's drawing a seven. I believe I'm already keeping. And there's a red mana into a soul ring, into a mox ruby. So this is a nice start, but unfortunately for my opponent, there's no follow up. And I'm playing a savannah into a savannah line. I, I always love to do that. Savannah into savannah line, it makes sense. Unfortunately, there's that lightning bolt again. And we've seen a lot of lightning bolts. And there's a Suchi. And I believe you see it so much because it's just. It's four colorless mana, you can put it in every deck. It's a four drop for a four four, which is pretty strong. And of course it's not boldable. So if you compare that for instance with a Juggernaut who's a five three, it's just the fact that you can bold it and the fact that it has to attack. Um, he's gonna attack now with the Suture. I'm down on 16 and I have a Sylvan Library in play. And I'm not happy with kind of having to take this early damage because it means four damage kind of is a card in this case. Because with Sylvan Library, you can look at the top three cards of your library and you can sort them the way you want to, then you draw one. But if you'd like to draw an extra, and I'm actually doing it right now, you have to take four damage. So I'm going down to 12 already. So, I mean, you're playing against a red deck, so it's a lot of burn in there. So this is dangerous what I'm doing. There's an Atok on the field. Okay, at least there's a Swords to Plows here is now taking care of the first threat, which is the Atok. And my opponent takes one life. Do I have a disenchant? Is that the reason? why I'm not dealing with the Suchi first. And there's a Stone Rain, and there's an attack, and I guess, okay, I have a second Swords, so the Suchi's gone as well. Does mean that my opponent gains more life there? K 
kind of getting a mini, mini dice. So I'll make sure I have the life total uh, edit here up for you down under the, the screen so you can kind of follow the life totals because that, that is really a tiny dice that my opponent uh, is putting there uh, on the field. Let's see what I'm doing. I'm just playing a factory passing turn. I mean, that stone ring was quite annoying, uh, but my opponent is also just passing turn. So this is great for me because I've got the Sylvan. So if he's kind of on a dead end, it's fine because with the Sylvan, I can draw exactly. I can draw creatures. I can draw whatever I, basically I need. Um, I, I am on 12 life, so the chances of me drawing an extra card with the Sylvan are pretty slim because then I'll go down to 8. I mean, it's a possibility, but... I probably will only do it if I have to. So there's a Suchi on the field playing a Plains. I play Sarah Angels as well. So I was thinking I get five mana. I don't seem to have those. I'm attacking with my factory, choosing to go for pressure. And there is the attack again. I'm untapping here. So he took six and he's simply just passing turn. So there's not a lot happening. And it's ideal for me. It looks like I'm really controlling the game. And there is a Lightning Bolt over my mistress factory that means that i'm hitting him for four so he's down on 15. remember he had a lot of life because of that double source that i had to play early in the game i kind of feel i didn't really have uh, a, 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 another choice i feel like i kind of had to play the double swords and there's another attack here for six so my opponent's going down to nine life and i'm also playing another savannah line so there's a lot of pressure on the board and I, th I think he kind of like, I mean, I'm, I'm on 12, but it's five, six mana, eight mana. It's a fireball for eight. Oh, and there's a fork. Wow, really nice. There's a fork, means 16 damage for me. Wow, well done. I, I think, you know, you don't see fork that often, um, you know, but it's one of those cards. And what I really like about fork, in this case, of course, forking a fireball is great, but... I, I love it when you're using a fork against blue and you're using it to counter a counter spell or you're using it to copy an ancestral recall. But this was definitely a beautiful play as well. So out of nowhere, my opponent is kind of taking this game from me. We're 1-1 one, one, and that means we're going on to game number three. Game number three. So let's see who's going to win this matchup. It's always nice if you get to start that decisive game, uh, especially with, with my deck, with the Savannah Lions, with the Mistress Factories, um, and with the White Knights. There are quite a lot of ways to, to get some early pressure on the board. Also, um, if you have a Sylvan, it's always nicer if you can just have the extra turn to see that three cards. Um, so I, I believe there are more ups here for me with starting and it looks like my opponent here is taking a mulligan. So he's taking another shuffle. And of course, we kind of have to go to the new mulligan rule, the London mulligan rule, meaning you're looking at your seven cards and you pick one of them and you put them on the bottom. We're actually already using that rule. I always ask my opponents, what do you prefer before we start? I mean, both is fine. Personally, I now like to kind of play test with the London Mulligan rule to see, okay, does it have any effect, especially with my, my Tron build. Um, but it's interesting. So we're seeing him now picking one card and put that on the bottom of his library. And there we go. And there is a Mox Pearl and a Savannah. Wow, that's a great start. That's a White Knight here off the bat. And is there going to be um, another Lightning Bolt? I mean, my yes, there is another Lightning Bolt. He seems to have lightning bolts left right and center whatever i play those first couple of turns um but i guess i i, I can't complain at least he's using it on my creatures and you know that his deck is working really well if he can just throw it to my face uh that usually means that i'm going to die very quickly he's playing atok here but has no artifacts yet to back it up and there's a lightning bolt from my side because i also play with the play set so it's kind of like war of the bolts here and um okay there's a suchi Hey, that's pretty good. If he has a Shatter, okay, it's gone. But if not, I can at least hit him for four for one turn. Let's see what's going to happen. Tapping a three red mana. Bull Lightning would be funny. No, there's a Stone Rain on my mountain. And so no red mana for me. I'm just playing a new basic one. Attacking here with a four four. And he has to take the hit here. So he's going to 16. 
but I'm not playing out an extra uh, threat, so it's just gonna be this one Suchi on the board. Like I said before, I'm playing with two Sarah Angels, so maybe when I hit five mana, let's see what my opponent does. Another Stone Rain, okay, so that five mana is not gonna happen, and I also lose my Red Stores again, so have to attack again. He's going to 12, playing a City of Brass. And he's playing an Atok. And there's a quick Swords to Plowsiers from my side. I'm attacking here. And I'm playing a White Knight. And here you kind of see that those um, Stone Rains have some effect. But it's not ideal because I seem to have enough land. So I kind of get to compensate. Because I think my opponent was hoping I would just kind of get stuck. Not having any red mana. Not getting past like not getting to four mana or five mana. Playing a Yoshin Soldier, and even the Yoshin Soldier I can take care of. I, I only have one card in hand, by the way. So if my opponent can somehow stabilize, I think he can still get back, but how? I mean, he's on three life. Playing a Shatter here over the Suchi, kind of playing um, a Vice, which is meaningless now. And he's on one life, just one life. So playing another stone rain that's all he can do so that means game and the match so i'm winning here uh it seems that second game and there's a little attack just to make it official so i'm winning with my pink sylvan so that's a, a one two for me here i felt my opponent was a bit unlucky there on that uh final game also taking a mulligan going to six um for now thank you for watching and if you'd like to see more old school magic um, you can click on the videos that are appearing on the screen right now or take a look at the channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do leave a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what you think of the game and what you think of the new mulligan rule. Do you like the London mulligan? Have you tried it out already? Or are you going to try it out? Or do you prefer the old way of uh, just taking a card less and being able to scry? Let me know what you think. For now, thank you for watching the Timmy channel, um, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you. Next time. He could just think it to somebody, cause he.